This video will conclude Speedcast's Starlink test series with a live deployment aboard Herta Gruten Expedition's Roald Amundsen. As we recently announced, Starlink has been deployed across the Herta Gruten Expedition's fleet and we couldn't be more excited. The Roald Amundsen is the first hybrid propulsion expeditionary ship and travels to many exotic locations. Herta Gruten Expeditions is known for challenging locations such as fjords or Antarctica where communications can be a real difficulty. This has pushed Speedcast to find multiple options such as VSAT, LTE, microwave links, and now Starlink. For years, we've combined these links with our SD-WAN solutions and adding Starlink to the mix makes perfect sense to be able to test and see how it performs and compares. Herta Gruden Expeditions and her cruises push the limits of communications technologies. In the Norwegian fjords, the depths of the fjords and the mountainous regions around them block the view from most geostationary satellites. We've had to use LTE, combining multiple SIM cards to provide CIR coverage when visibility to geostationary satellites is lost. Norway also has a challenge with weather, where you have rain and snowstorms that can block even the best coverage. You still need L-band communications to maintain a link for critical shoreside infrastructure such as point-of-sale devices or ATMs. Now we are adding Starlink to the existing technologies with SD-WAN and bringing a holistic communication solutions to our customers using 100% uptime for all of their services. Combined with new communication tools, as they become available, the amount of throughput relative to communication challenges gets better and better every year. Installation aboard the Roald Amundsen was completed on her journey between Boston to Miami. The testing results are in line with expectations. With no CIR or SLA on the service, it still had good coverage throughout the duration of her trip to South America. We do see some gaps where Starlink is still working on regulatory landing rights in the local countries. Overall, we see a throughput that's expected. We also see throughput change with relation to the ship's location and a Starlink teleport. An interesting lessons learned from our deployment, pole mount Starlinks appear to have a large amount of movement even on a very steady ship. The new wedge mounts from Starlink offer an improved installation method to reduce this amount of vibration. Thank you for watching our Starlink series where we've covered the unboxing of a new Starlink maritime system, how to mount it, starting the system up, running the system on water to see performance in motion, combining the links with SD-WAN, integrating it with solutions like Sigma, and finally, the live deployment aboard Herta Gruten Expeditions. We would like to thank the Herta Gruten Expeditions and the Roald Amundsen for their support. Please keep in mind, as you evaluate Starlink for your own solutions, that Starlink is a best effort service. There's no SLA or CIR. The capacity is shared between the beams and the satellites. However, Testing has shown that the service is still good, even without these commitments. Internet remains the only option for Starlink, and it's not available everywhere yet. Starlink is working on regulatory approvals in many countries. But in closing, Starlink is a great solution to add to your portfolio. It brings new terminals, new orbits, new bandwidth, fantastic mobility to add into enterprise solutions for our current and or future customers. If you have any questions or would like to know more, please contact us through our website. And if you're interested in Starlink, please register your interests. Remember to like our videos and leave a comment if you enjoyed this series.